Hello, welcome to my channel, Maretta Threads. I am Maretta, but you can also call me Marta Threads or Threadsy. So if you're one of my subscribers, first of all, thank you. Second of all, this is the discount code Vivian30. It is 30% off the sewing pattern. It is linked below and it'll last the first 48 hours. So this is what the top looks like. As you can see, we have a couple of different hemline options, curved, straight, full length and then at the back you also can do a bow tie but if you don't like that as a detail you can just do an adjustable strap that runs up the top and it is a little bit more inconspicuous. One of my favorite ways to wear this top actually was to make the full length version in a slightly larger size and I would tuck in the sides into my bra so that I got a curved hem but then when I was out at dinner and I wanted to feel a little bit more modest or just comfortable I would untuck it so that I could have it full length and then I would just tuck it back in later so that's an option. As usual this sewing pattern has two resources if you have a serger overlocker and a straight sewer you're going to use the written and visual instructions however if you only have one machine you're going to use this YouTube tutorial and it's going to look very different to the written instructions instructions and that's just because we're going to have to do a lot more zigzag stitches for the edges because we're using a jersey fabric and it's just the best way to go about it. So I'm going to do everything step by step with you so let's get into it. To begin print page one and use the measuring box to measure one centimeter or one inch. If correct you can print your remaining pages and then I like to stack all of my pages together and trim away the right hand border and then the bottom hand border. Now I did not remove the top and left hand border and that is because it can act as a little bit of a buffer. As you see there the arrows connect to create an X but page 2 went a little bit under page 1 and if we've cut away too much on page 1 then there's that little buffer that we can use as a tolerance. So you're just going to add one little tab of sticky tape to each X and then once you've done that and you're happy with how your pattern is sitting then you'll go in with the longer lengths of tape. And before you cut out your sewing pattern, just make sure you refer to PDF 1 page 2 as it has the size guide and the size key so that you can cut out the right size for yourself. So now it is time to cut out our sewing pattern. So both the front and the back of the top is just one layer and it is cut on the fold. So make sure when you lay out your fabric, it is laid out on the fold. So once you have cut out your sewing pattern pieces, you're going to lay out the front panel, good side facing up, then lay down the back panel, good side facing down. And this way, good sides are facing each other and the bad side of the fabric should be facing us. From there, you'll just add some pins and then we're going to go across to our sewing machine. So we are going to go for a zigzag stitch. So just select that zigzag stitch option. And then when you place your fabric down, make sure that we're working at a one centimeter or three quarters of an inch mark. That way, just a little bit of the fabric should poke out on the side. And that way you'll avoid your fabric getting jammed at all in those feed dogs of your sewing machine. So we're gonna do this four times, closing up the shoulder seams and then the side seams of the top. From there, we're just going to trim away that excess seam allowance that isn't doing anything. That'll just remove any bulk that we have in our garment as it'll just make life easier later when we go to hem it. Which comes in handy right now because now we are going to hem the top perimeter of this top. So let's have a look at a couple of finishing options. Usually I would use an overlocker edge because as you can see, it's very easy to just flip and then hem but this is what I'm proposing that you do do. And that is do a straight stitch along the edge because then it creates a defined edge that's very easy to manipulate and flip over twice. The last option is this option where you just manually fold it over twice, but it just takes a little bit more time because you would likely need to iron it once with a flipped edge and then flip it over again and iron it. So let's do option number two. So now we are going to put our straight stitch function on and we're going to move the pin to the right. So I am just nudging that as far forward right as it goes and then I'm placing some scrap fabric underneath at the one centimeter or three eighths of an inch mark. 
Once sewn, I pull that out, I have a little look and if I fold that once and then fold it again, I think it might just be a little bit too narrow. So I went in another time and I moved the needle a little bit to the left this time and I felt like this was the perfect width. So maybe just trial this with some scrap fabric and on your own machine to get a nice little width that you're happy with and then from there you are just going to do a straight stitch all along the top perimeter of that top. So once you've finished that and we're still sewing with our needle to the right, I'm going to close off my sewing straps. So make sure when you're sewing, you are currently sewing on the bad side of the fabric and the needle is as far right as possible so that our straps are the right thickness. So once you've finished sewing both of those straps, you can just put them to the side and now we're moving on to our top. So make sure the bad side of the fabric is currently facing up and we're just going to press into place those new seams that we made with that stitch. So that is one fold done and out of the way. So now it is time to do the second fold. So just fold that fabric as best you can, maintaining that same width. And then once you've pressed just a little bit, just secure that into place with a couple of pins and keep going. So once you've finished ironing and pinning the top part of the top, we're gonna to move on to the armholes and the bottom hem. For this hemming, we're just going to fold over the fabric once this time and just give it one press and it'll look like this. It's pretty self-explanatory. You will be able to do it. The only thing that you might have a little bit of issue with is the side seam right underneath the bottom of the underarm. And that's just because it's not a um, straight edge it's got quite a sharp angle to it so you may find it difficult to iron that but just do the best that you can and you'll manipulate it later as well while you're sewing so just do that on both armholes and the bottom perimeter giving it about a one centimeter hem so as we go to hem the top we're going to hem it with a zigzag stitch in this first example there, you can see the first stitch that I did, it's quite narrow. However, if you are new to sewing, I do recommend you just do the normal standard width of a zigzag stitch, which is this one. However, for me, I want it to be a little narrower, so I am just playing with my settings until I get it down to a width that I like. And you'll quickly see here why it is important to have a wider zigzag stitch if you're newer to sewing. And that's because we are sewing right on that little edge there. Where our needle is, we're going to catch the edge of the fabric and kind of conceal that raw edge. Now I'm probably overdoing it with the detail right now, but I just personally don't love the look of a zigzag stitch as a detail to the clothes that I make. And so I just try to make them a little bit more narrow and I obviously am confident that I'll be able to pick up that raw edge and conceal it nicely. However, you can at the same time see if you're doing a wider zigzag stitch, it would probably be easier for you to pick up and it just has a better tolerance zone of error. So when you go to finish that off, just make sure that you back tack and then do the same process again on the armholes. As you see there, I did mention we might have a little bit of difficulty at the beginning. So just manipulate the fabric and stretch it out a bit at that bottom point of the armhole if it's difficult to flip over. And now it is time to hem the top perimeter of the top. 
Now I'm going OTT again right now, but you don't have to do this. You can just continue with the same stitch that you were already using. However, because the cowl neck part of the top has a tendency to flip over, both sides can show. And that's why we're concealing it in this double rolled hem method. And I actually manipulated the stitch length again to just be a little bit more narrowed. It is good to do a zigzag stitch because it works so well with stretch fabric. So I am making sure I'm still doing a zigzag, but I did just make it even straighter. You're then going to grab your straps and turn them inside out with a loop turner and then grab your iron and give them a nice press flat. Now keep that iron out because you're then going to give the top a little bit of a press and that is mostly just to iron it out flat so that we can remove some of that warping that we have around that hem. I do think that I got more warping than I otherwise would have if I hadn't gone with such a narrow zigzag stitch so just keep that in the back of your mind. You're then just going to pick up the straps that you have made and attach them with a pin to the shoulder points of the top. You do have the option to attach it here with a satin stitch, but I am opting for a stitch in the ditch just because I don't want to draw attention to this area. And the best way to do that is by attaching the strap, but doing it in that little seam of the top, because when your thread is the same as the fabric, it just conceals it completely and it's a really seamless finish. So once you've cleaned up those threads and have a look, this is what you'll be left with and you're done. So that is the end of the tutorial. I really hope that was helpful. I actually refilmed this tutorial maybe three or four times because each time I shot, I was doing it too similarly to how I made the written and visual instructions. And there's just a really different way to work with sewing patterns when you only have one sewing machine and it is a stretch fabric. So I really hope that was helpful. However, if you have any questions at all, comment below and I will get back to you. But outside of that, I hope you enjoy the sewing ahead and good luck.